live and they can watch it and tune in there. Um, we have a lot of stuff to get to, 18 sessions this year, which is awesome, and we're hoping to hear from moderators from every session, so we're going to be a little bit uh, tighter schedule-wise than usual. Uh, and on that note, why don't I hand it over to this year's coordinator, Nina, who's going to introduce us to EDO 2014. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Vance. And welcome, everybody, to the live kickoff of the Electronic Village Online 2014. I'm Nina Liakos, and I'm speaking to you from my home in the state of Maryland in the United States, uh, near Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm here with Vance Stevens. Vance is the founder of the online community of practice, Webheads in Action, and is a fellow member of the EVO 2014 coordination team. And he's in the United Arab Emirates in Al Ain, as he just told you, and also Jeff Lebo of World Bridges, EFL Bridges, Korea Bridge, and EdTech Talk, to name just a few of his online projects, who is joining us from his home in South Korea, Busan. Also joining us are members of the moderating teams from the EVO 2014 sessions and participants in those sessions. Thank you all for your presence here today. And thanks also to those who are listening to the recording of this webcast because they're unable to be with us today. As moderators and participants in the EVO, you are part of a very special community of English language educators around the world. EVO is sponsored by the TESOL International Association and is a project of the Computer Assisted Language Learning Intersection. The first EVO sessions were inaugurated in 2001 with five four-week sessions prior to the TESOL convention, and three three-week sessions afterward. 2002 saw five eight-week sessions before the convention. Since 2003, we have offered seven or more sessions annually. Oh, yes, there. that's the noise. Maybe we should start muting mics. That mic on. It could be maybe Jeff. I think Jeff is bombed out. Let me switch off his mic. No, I think Jeff's mic. Okay. Oh, hey. um, just standing by till it goes away. Let's see, Nina. I'm going to just mute yours just in case it's you. Okay. No. The best laid plans. This is amazing. Oh, here it is. It's, it's Ali Fouad, I'm afraid. Okay. No, I see a lot of red there, but I muted his mic and... Okay. Huh? Oh, could it be... When is open thinking for that. Okay. What I was it? I can still hear you. It was can uh, you still Pradet. Hear me? What was it? It was Pradet, uh, Julia. Ah, okay. Uh, we're, we're ah, okay. 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 Can you guys Good. still hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. I, I was hear. trying to run a timer, by the way, and that's going to be a count up timer. And so. In about four minutes, we should try to shift, uh, switch over. Nina, can you advance your slideshow? You're a moderator. You can advance the show with the arrows at the top of your screen. And that arrows one. at the top of my screen. The thing is, I can't see that oh, while okay. I'm talking. Okay. I'll take I care of it. You can just, just go back okay. to that. Okay. So you can hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Because I got this little message that my connection had failed. <laughs> <laughs> I need to like we're hitting buttons. They're kind of hard to see. Okay. okay. Can I keep going now? Sure. All right. So we actually are on slide two now. Thank you. Okay. So this year, <laughs> we are really happy to be able to offer 18 five-week sessions. We've never offered more than 18. Uh, we offered 18 once in the past, and we're back to 18 again. We have a total of 95 moderators 
and they're living in those 29 different countries that you see on the slide, uh, in North America, South America, Europe, the Middle East, the Far East, and North Africa. So um, we're, I can't even begin to tell you where the participants are, are coming from. Anyway, uh, I say that the EVO is a special community because from the outset, its sessions have been open to all, whether TESOL members or not, and they are completely free of charge. We are able to do this because we don't offer credit or certificates of completion. Uh, we don't grade or evaluate our participants. We don't even call what we offer courses or classes. They are sessions. Uh, we don't see our moderators as teachers so much as facilitators and organizers. After all, all the participants are teachers as well. Uh, and the moderators are, without exception, volunteering their time and expertise. Nobody gets paid for EVO involvement, just as nobody pays to participate. Participants and moderators together form learning communities where all are invited to share what they know and develop their knowledge according to their preferences and the time that they have to devote to the project. There are no sticks here, only carrots. What you get out of your EVO participation is completely up to you, which may be what makes it so addictive that many of us keep coming back year after year. I'd like to give a shout out to the coordination team for this year. Uh, Aiden Ye, Holly Dilatush, Elizabeth Ann, Van Stevens, Carla Arena, Daphne Gonzalez, Elizabeth Hansen Smith, Mabarak Akadar, and Jose Antonio da Silva. Without their hard work over the past eight months, we would not be here today kicking off EVO 2014. A heartfelt thanks to all of you. I would also like to thank the kind people who mentored a session despite not being on the coordination team. Luthaina Alosman, Daniela Wagner Loera, Claire Braden Siskin, Rubina San Luis, and Teresa Almeida Dessa. Uh, here's a summary of the sessions we're offering this year. Moderators from each session are here to briefly introduce their sessions to you over the next couple of hours. The sessions are CLIL, Using Technology for Content and Language Integrated Learning, Crafting the ePerfect Textbook, Designing and Managing Projects in the ESOL Organization, Developing Business English Teachers, Developing Mentoring Skills, and Dream Act, What Teachers Can Do. Continuing EVO Drama, Structuring Drama Work, ICT for ELT. They're going to tell you what that means. Machine Evo, Moodle for te Teachers, Multi MOOC, and NNEST Evo. And online tools for ESL, ESL civic engagement projects, peace building for language learners, podcasting for the ESL, ESL classroom teaching English to young learners and teenagers, wonderful words, vocabulary matters, and use of mobile applications in language classes. And now I will turn the mic back over to Vance and Jeff, our Masters of Ceremonies for today. Thank you very much, and let the fun and the learning begin. Thank you very Great. much, Nina. Thanks, Nina. Um, can, can everybody see the timer? I'm just, because I'm going to run the timer, I'm going to count it up. It will count up to five minutes. That's when we sh you should be starting. Uh, if you see the timer that it goes up to five minutes, you should stop uh, and make room for the next session. But can everyone see it? I, I know the moderators can. Uh, it sounds okay. like Yes, I can well, see can it. See. Okay, good. Okay, so I'll just keep that timer uh, above the uh, in the top of the screen, and you'll have an idea about how long you've been talking. We're trying to allow uh, ten minutes, uh, five minutes per uh, per session. 
Okay. And, and cool. we are trying to get as many people in as, as possible. And we also, if people are still here uh, at the end or we get a little extra time along the way, we'd love to hear from participants. In the meantime, if you have any comments or questions related to the sessions or anything, please put them in the chat room. Uh, I believe our first session is uh, podcasting, and Evelyn was uh, going to speak about that. Uh, I believe she was having some audio issues. Evelyn, are you able to join us? I know Evelyn is very uh, time sensitive. She was going to go at a quarter after, and it's 13 after now, so maybe she had to, maybe she had to drop out. But anyway, if she's back in the next couple of hours, she can always talk to us. Should we go on with the next one? Why don't we do that? Um, which was Anne Marie, who I think might have also been having some audio issues from uh, the Dream Act. Uh, Anne Marie, if you're able to join us, please do so. Or let us know what's going on in the chat room. Ah, Evelyn, Evelyn is there. She's she's uh, ready. She's just texted okay. that she's on. Please. Okay, she's pressing the button. And she says she's pushing the bottom. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Uh, well, button, okay. So we're we're still not hearing you. I don't know if you're getting any volume meter movement in your uh, audio block. Um, I assume you, you, if you've had issues, you've clicked tools, audio, microphone settings. You could run an audio wizard. We could go. We could take the next person. You could do an audio wizard, and five minutes from now, Anne, you could come back. Anne Marie is in the chat room. Uh, so Anne Marie, if you're available, go ahead and press the talk button also, and uh, we'll, we can get you in or have you standing by. Oh, I see a sad face from Evelyn. Yeah, that's okay. We're following the text chat. Um, well, while we're waiting, oh, yes, we we hear you, Evelyn. Here's somebody. We kind of hear you. We hear something. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much for your introduction, Nina. Thank you, Jeff and Vance, for moderating this session. It's a pleasure to be here again, sharing with a wonderful colleagues from all over the world. And this year, we're going to offer podcasting for the ESL, ESL classroom uh, for the fourth time in a row. And uh, we're really happy because we have two new co-moderators. We usually invite new moderators, and oh, we uh -oh. see Evelyn. Uh, I switched off the sound, the interfering sound. I seem to switch off everybody. So let's give it back to everybody. Let's see. Okay. There, no? I see I managed to have taken away everybody's sound. So let's see if I can get it all back. Um, Hello. Hello. There you are. Uh -huh. You are back, Evelyn. Sorry about uh that. well let me let me try to repeat again. I don't know what I said and if you <laughs> could hear. Um well my name again is Evelyn Izquierdo. I'm from Caracas, Venezuela. I'm representing today the podcasting for the ESL EFL uh, classroom session. Um, we are four co-moderators. This is the fourth year in a row when we uh, offer this session. And it's been a very successful session. The four co-moderators are Miguel Mendoza, um, Mari Carmen Gamero, 
Mauricio Arango from Colombia and me, Evelyn Izquierdo, uh, Mike or Miguel, Mari Carmen and me are from Venezuela and Mauricio from Colombia. Um, this year again we're offering the opportunity to teach uh, teachers the basic notions on how to create podcasts and how to use podcasting in their ESL and EFL classrooms. Uh, we've developed um, different spaces and, and uh, we, we've designed, I'm sorry, um, a syllabus uh, for five weeks as the rest of the sessions. And uh, during those weeks, we're going to talk about the difference between podcasting and podcasts. That wasn't me that time. It seems to happen. I loaded a different page, and when I loaded it, the audio went. So I'm thinking maybe that's an issue. Sorry, Evelyn. <laughs> if you're hearing us, maybe please press she talk just again. Needs to click it back in. It's probably switching off, and she just needs to resume the mic. Maybe she's listening and can hear that. So see if you can activate your mic again. Up to the normal uh, cat herding start here. <laughs> Evelyn, if you do hear us, please press the. Oh, there you are. Okay, great. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah. I think so. I'm not okay. Sure what's going on. Well, uh, what you're showing is our uh, main um, blog. We've developed three uh, blogs. One is uh, the session blog. It was designed to show um, and to share all the content and syllabus. Uh, and here you will see the basic information about the, the session. All the activities we're going to do week by week. And we also have links to other um, blogs we have. We have created the, um, the activity block where we um, provide all information in detail. And then we have the reading blog. It's a blog designed for um, participants to discuss about the different readings and to share their ideas about podcasting and all different uh, suggestions they can give to all the participants too. Uh, we also have the Jaho group, that is the communication um, tool, the main one. But we also have other tools we're going to use during the, the session. We have Voxapop, we have VoiceThread. Even though they are not uh, podcasting tools, we're going to use them as a way to communicate and um, provide a, a space for discussions and um, participants to express their expectations about the, the session. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will offer more information about uh, web-based tools. We have different activities and very exciting activities. Well, Nina was uh, our participant too. Uh, she is our mentor now. <laughs> it's been great to have her with, with us again. And uh, it's always wonderful to have an international crowd and and people who are eager to learn and participate. At the end of, of the session, we have a, a podcasting fair where um, participants are going to show the product of their activities during this um, session. It's really awesome, all what we have. And uh, well, I invite you to participate too if you want to learn on how to produce your own podcast and how to publish them. If you have any questions, well, I am here. All right. Thank you very much, Evelyn. I'll, I always like to tune into the, the kind of exhibition at the end of that session. 
uh, and I'll certainly be tuning in. Uh, and I believe you have to go, so we will say thank you. And Anne-Marie, if you are available, please click talk on your microphone. We'd love to hear from you. Hello. Are you able to hear? We hear Lori. We were hoping to hear from Anne-Marie. I'm actually going to speak for Anne-Marie. She's having okay. some technical difficulties. Um, I'm part of the DREAM Act group, and what we're working on is first, we just want to thank you for this opportunity. We're really excited as a group to learn about this new technology so we can spread um, the conversation about the DREAM Act, which is happening throughout the United States right now. And for people who aren't familiar, the DREAM Act is where um, undocumented youth are trying to be able to attend college at an in-state tuition rate. And it's a movement throughout the U.S. Maryland last year in the popular election just passed the DREAM Act. Um, New Jersey right at New Year's passed a version of the DREAM Act. So it's a hot issue right now in the U.S. And in our session, we're going to be having um, participants explore the different aspects of the DREAM Act, learn who dreamers are through video, through poetry, and through articles. And as they discuss dreamers and what teachers can do to support dreamers, at the end they're going to be coming up with a final project, such as a newspaper article or a letter to Congress supporting the dreamers. And we found some examples of articles and of um, children activist campaigns that our participants can look at to learn about the dreamers and ways to advocate for dreamers. Thank you. I want to take a look at your page. I'm scared that if I do that, uh, I might lose your audio. So if that happens, please press the uh, talk button again. Okay. Did it happen? Okay. I can see the page. So for our session, um, it's really to try to get teachers to become more active in the movement and to support teachers on what we can do to support our students. Since many of our kids have bought into the American dream that if you work really hard, you can go to college and be successful, but the dream isn't available to them at an affordable rate. And a lot of people say they can only sign up for one class at a time because it's so unaffordable to go to college and they don't qualify for any federal aid. So our whole discussion we're facilitating is to help teachers learn about these students and how to support them. And as you can see, when we go down to week five, it's our advocacy week so teachers can be active and take an active role in advocating for our students. I'm curious, are there, are there different sides of this coin? Are there political sides or is it, it not really an issue? It is a political issue right now. And in some of the articles that we've linked, you can kind of see the political discussion coming from both sides. People who support dreamers and realize that these children view themselves as Americans. They've been here the majority of their life. They relate to American culture and then people who view it more as an immigration issue and don't want to support the dreamers because their families can here illegally. And for people who aren't necessarily from the session, I want to tune into this. There's a wiki that they can keep an eye on and a Google Plus community they can join. There is. And for our Google Plus community, we have requested that people um, send us an email to register who they are because we were worried that someone might come in with the intention of hate since if you read any of the comments about dream articles, dreamers from newspaper articles, they usually get some rather hateful comments and we just wanted to see if people were interested in learning about the dreamers or if they just wanted to be hateful. So we do ask that you email us and that information is on our wiki. All right, well, thank, All right. Well, thank you very much. Very much. Any final words, Lori, or a final question for Lori? 
we're just really excited. And so far, our participants are pretty low. We're about nine people. But we keep adding more, and hopefully more people will register today. That sounds good. I'm sure there's a lot of people who might not be uh, in touch with the web community that might be interested in this as well. So hopefully people will spread the word. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lori. And I am going to echo I think that is because Lori was not able to hit that. But uh, uh, we'll find out that she. Uh, I'm glad you noticed that. The echo is really bad. Really bad. All right, I believe right, next up we have Susan from Drama. And Lori, if you can uh, press the talk button again to give up the microphone. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's a good idea if you're not speaking to please keep your microphone on mute. Don't just leave it on talk because then even we can hear your key presses and things like that. And then also, while speaking to us, if you can wear a headset, we'd appreciate it. Okay. So I guess we're ready for our next one. And that was good timing, Lori. Yes, thank you. We're standing by for Susan. And also we're hoping Nina will rejoin us. Hello? Nina's computer crashed. Oh, dear. <laughs> but she's back now. Oh, hello. Uh, so hello, Go Susan. Hi, Please Susan. tell us about the EVO Drama 2014. Yes. Um, I'm Susan Hilliard. I'm from Buenos Aires in Argentina, uh, originally from Liverpool in the UK. And uh, Evo Drama is now in its ninth year, although I've been moderating on it for only six years. I think it's six years now. Um, we have uh, some old hands. Um, there's our syllabus there. You can see it on the screen. Well, it was there. Now, yes, now it's back up. Um, our old hands are Gary Parkin, who really is the founder and our revered boss on Evo Drama. And then we have Shumei, Shumei Kao, who is uh, from Taiwan and is the author of a, a drama book, Words, Worlds into Words. And uh, we also have Holly Dilatouche who is here online, but I think she has problems with her sound. Holly has been with us all the time, and this year she was even our mentor. And she did a wonderful job, although she had quite a lot of family problems at the time. So we were trying to support her while she was trying to support us, but uh, we got through with everything. We also have Judy Troopin from the States, who has been with us forever, as far as I know. And Leslie Sapp uh, from the States, but has now just taken up a new job in Turkey. And she doesn't know how much she's going to be able to help us, but she's been joining in as much as possible. And, well, me, of course. Um, as I said, I'm from Liverpool, and I go to about seven countries every year training teachers. And I'm also training teachers here at the Ministry of Education. I'm training them to teach English through drama in special education, so it's a slightly different twist. Our new moderator this year is Sylvia Montimuro, who is a member of my team in English in Action at the Ministry here, and uh, she's, she's been a participant for several years, and now she's uh, been promoted to being a moderator. We're going to be doing structuring drama activities this year. We found that in the past we've done more or less pure drama, teaching English through drama. But we have many teachers who are really restricted by their coordinators and their heads of department who insist that they work from books, uh, textbooks. And the textbooks are, are really quite traditional in most cases. So what we're doing is having the teachers look at their textbook unit from a different angle and helping them to see those units through the eye of drama activities. So we've divided our drama activities up into four areas. Drama is about action. Drama is about suspending disbelief. Drama is about learning by doing and doing everything using the speaking body in the empty 
space. So we try to combine that with the textbook. So that we're going to be doing in the first week introductions and basic drama conventions from process drama or educational drama. And then in week two, we start the actual action conventions. In week two, we're starting with context building action. And we're going through all the drama conventions that have been designed over the years through research into how drama works. And we're going to be applying that to the request that the teachers make based on their textbook unit. So we think we are moving into another field this year in many ways. Um, Holly, please interrupt me on the on the chat if I say anything which doesn't make sense. Philip Trivett from Britain is saying uh, Dorothy Hesketh. Yes, most of our work is taken from Dorothy Hesketh's seminal work in the 60s. It's unfortunate she died two years ago. Um, but uh, all our work is taken from Dorothy Hester and Gavin Bolton, her major disciple. And now people like Jonathan Neeland and Winston and people like that. Okay, second week is going to be narrative action where we look into story drama and we look at how we can develop narratives from textbook units and how we can move the students into using the speaking body in the empty space, but all based on the, the work that they have to get through in their regular syllabi. And then on uh, week four... Uh, Susan, can, yeah? can I remind you, we have to allocate five minutes per session, and yeah. uh, if you can wrap up very quickly, because we've gone okay. over five minutes. Okay, oh, have I gone over five already? Goodness me. There's a little timer up at the top. <laughs> yes, but I didn't time myself at the beginning. That's the problem. <laughs> okay. Um, week four is poetic action, where we move into the symbolic um, world of drama. And so we go into metaphor, we go into simile, we go into symbols, and we look at the message underneath the narrative. And then in week five, we move into reflective action, where we have a whole set of conventions within the drama world. And that will move us into the survey for the end of the EVO drama session this year, leading into next year's uh, request. I think that sums it up. Any questions are welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Susan. Uh, Vance has become a very strict cat herder so I guess we should move on and ask Claire if she is available to join us. She is next to talk about the Developing a Business English Teachers session. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, right on cue. Nicely done. Okay, great. I'll put my camera on. Excellent. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, so uh, my name is Claire Hart. As you can see, I live in Germany where I teach business English in companies and in university. And um, our course, it's called Developing Business English Teachers. And its aim is to give business English teachers the chance to develop professionally online. Um, so to join our course, you could be someone who's interested in business English teaching but has never tried it before, uh, perhaps someone who used to teach business English but has stopped and wants to get back into it, um, or someone who's been doing it for 20 years and wants to continue um, developing professionally. Um, as you can see, or as you could see a moment ago, um, we have a large team of moderators, 10 altogether, including myself, and we have some of the most well-known faces in the world of business English, I think. Uh, a lot of us, or in fact all of us really, are involved with IATEFL BISIC, the Business English Special Interest Group of IATEFL, International Association of Teachers of English as a Foreign Language, and in that role, we already do a lot uh, to promote professional English for business English teachers. 
And this EVO session is like a continuation and consolidation and expansion on that in, in many ways. Um, last year we also did a business English session and the focus there was on course design. Um, and this year we thought it would be nice because we have so many people involved and they all have a lot of different skills um, and interests and expertise, uh, we thought it would be nice to sort of broaden out from that focus on course design and look at um, more different aspects that Business English teachers need to look at or can look at uh, in order to develop professionally. Uh, so that's why we're going to be looking at uh, motivation in the first week with Roy and Kristen, learner motivation and teacher motivation in a business English context. We're going to be looking at needs analysis, how to do a needs analysis, that tends to be an important thing that a, for a business English teacher. Uh, we're also going to be looking at learning styles with Marjorie Rosenberg, who's just written the book on that subject. Um, and then we'll be looking at, um, let me just check, so I don't, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. In week three, we'll be looking at uh, teaching interpersonal skills in a business English context. Um, teaching conversation, small talk, um, those soft skills that business English teachers are often called upon to teach. Um, in week four, we'll be looking at tech tools with myself and Mercedes Viola. Um, we'll be showing you some tech tools you can use in the business English classroom. And the final week um, sort of reflects the fact that a lot of business English teachers work freelance or have their own companies. Um, so it's more of a kind of a practical thing, um, how to build a successful teaching business. We've just seen Arena. And, um, and then finally, we, we want our participants to continue with this professional development after the session has ended. Um, so our final thing is um, working with our participants to create a personal professional development plan, which they can then keep and hopefully follow uh, over the course of the year to come. Um, yeah, we're going to be using uh, Edmodo as our interaction platform. We have a wiki and we're also going to be having two live sessions a week. So a lot of the focus of our course will be on that live interaction. Um, yeah, so we hope to get lots of um, spontaneous interaction with our participants as well as asynchronous interaction too. And that's about it from me. Uh, maybe one more thing. Thank you very much to the EVO coordinating team. You are wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow, you nailed it exactly. Five minutes. That is very impressive. And I have a question. I'm going to get in trouble with Vance. But you're using the Enmodo and the Wiki, both of which I believe are protected. Um, for people like Nelly and myself who want to participate in every session or at least check stuff out, is there anywhere that we can kind of see what's produced from this session? Um, well, hmm, you would have to join our Edmodo group, really. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll have to yeah. do that. You can join the Edmodo group and then you can access everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, next up is Jeff. Jose Antonio. Oh, Nina? Jeff, can I just jump in here and say that some people uh, sign up for sessions. Uh, they're not able to participate because they signed up for too many. I don't know if I would recommend this, but it is a way to have access to all the materials from all the sessions that you're interested in. It might be nice to let the moderators know that that's what you're doing. Okay. Uh, Jose Antonio, we are standing by to hear about ICT for ELT. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Hello. So I'm just Antonio. Okay. Uh, our session is called ICT for ELT. Okay. Let me explain what it means. So it stands for. Uh, Can we ask you to turn your video on if it's available? Okay. Sure. 
So, yeah, okay. So ICT for EOT stands for Internet, um, Information Communication Technology for English Language Teaching, all right? Uh, and this is a session for teachers uh, who, uh, I mean, who want to use technology with their, uh, in their classes but don't know much about it, okay? So it's like a false beginner course. I mean, if you have some computer skills, you can join our course, right? Um, and uh, it also will help more experienced teachers to integrate technology into their teaching, all right? That's our goal. And we're going to explore some ICT tools to help teachers do that. Uh, about the, the story of this course, uh, it was designed, uh, this session was designed by uh, a team of uh, uh, former uh, Become Your Web Head coordinators and uh, moderators. Uh, so we have a, a nice team. So with us, we have uh, Ayatao in Egypt, and there is Helen Davis in France. Me, okay, I'm from Brazil. I'm in Oklahoma, in the United States now, but I'm from Brazil. There is Larissa Olasova. Uh, she's a Russian, but she's living in the United States, all right? And there is Maria Bosa in Argentina. And Mbarak Akadar, who's here with us too from Morocco. And Svetlana Obenosova from uh, Croatia. Okay, so it's a, it's, a, it's a team from many different countries. And so what happened was like ball was offered for like 10 years and we uh, decided to create this course to keep uh, the web head spirit alive and to share, I mean, what we know with people. And uh, so our main objective is this, to enable language teachers to integrate technology into their teaching uh, using tech tools to access, store, transmit, and manipulate information. And uh, the ones that, who join our course will have an opportunity to apply, okay, to create their own instructional materials using a variety of tools and collaborate and exchange and share ideas. This part is uh, very important for us, okay? And um, so let me just uh, summarize what we, uh, we will have in our uh, week syllabus, uh, weekly syllabus. So in week one, that starts uh, as of tomorrow, okay, it's getting to know each other. So uh, many people started doing that already. Uh, they will join our platforms. We're using a wiki and a Yahoo groups and Edmodo. So they first join the Yahoo group and then post their uh, introduction there and go to the wiki and do that too with uh, photos and everything. In, uh, that's week one. Uh, in week two is synchronous and asynchronous communication tools. Uh, so we explore some text tools, audio and video tools for doing that. Uh, in week three, okay, we will explore presentation tools such as blogs and wikis, uh, presentation tools and blogs and wikis. Uh, we think it's important to have blogs and wikis because many teachers use blogs already and wikis are collaborative tools that are really helpful. In, uh, in week four, we have interactive, ex interactive exercises and quizzes, so we explore that as a means of creating content, okay, and uh, helping uh, teachers develop this. And then uh, week five is our cooperating online and wrap up, okay, so this last week there is a, a, a survey, okay, and we'll uh, teach them about cooperating online. And we're planning to introduce, uh, introduce them to the web head in action community. I think it's very important. Uh, we have weekly readings. Okay, our platforms, like I said, it's at the Modo and Yahoo Groups and, and the main platforms is BBWiki, BBWiki, BBWorks. And so far, I mean, 148 people have joined our course. Uh, I want to especially thank Fernanda uh, Rodriguez in Portugal who helped us with, the, uh, I mean, in the course, but She's not in the moderating team, but she was a big help. Uh, so we have 148 participants so far, and from uh, Africa, Asia, Europe, Oceania, North America, and South America. And you're welcome to join our course. It'd be a pleasure if you can have uh, you with us. Join us. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Jose Antonio.
Uh, I believe next up is Maisie and Tamas from Developing Mentoring Skills. Please go ahead and uh, uh, enter. Oh, how exciting. Good evening, everyone, from the uh, cool uh, Dubai. Uh, six o'clock, and it's fantastic to be here. Uh, my name is Tomas, and I'm representing the Mentoring EVU group. I'm uh, really excited to work with a great group of people. Uh, Rosalie Sarah from Brazil, um, Deborah Tapovich from Argentina, so we've got our Latin American contingency, and the Middle Eastern contingency represented by Valerie Takar and Meg, who is also here uh, from Israel, and me living in the UAE and uh, contact with uh, Hungary. Um, the mentoring has been a, has a, a long uh, history, and uh, it's been a very successful. Um, EVU session, and we are very excited to start this year's uh, session. And we were so excited that we couldn't wait, so we've already started nagging our participants with uh, um, online forms and online um, uh, platforms where they could sign up. We've got a Facebook group and a Facebook page. We've got a uh, Yahoo group as our main communication platform. We've also set up a blog, and we've got a Twitter account. So uh, we try to spread out in terms of technology, not because we want to turn the AVO session into a technology bonanza, but we would like uh, to offer people as many platforms as uh, We've got over 160 people on our Facebook page and uh, just reached 100 this afternoon of people on our mailing list on uh, on the Yahoo groups. Looking forward to a very exciting uh, platform for conversation. And uh, our main aim here is, um, is to try to um, approach participants individually and uh, help them identify and develop uh, their own mentoring agenda. And this is one of the reasons for the mentoring forms that we would really like to uh, start off something that we could go on uh, uh, working on throughout the year. We would like to keep the blog going and the Facebook community. We've got uh, very exciting online events uh, lined up. Um, in the first week, we will start with. Uh, uh, I couldn't resist doing it. Hungary, so um, we are very excited to see that the ITEFO Hungary uh, uh, has have set up a uh, mentoring uh, special interest group. And I think it's a first. Uh, at least I don't know of um, special interest groups dedicated to mentoring. And, uh, we are going to live stream their first um, ever from uh, the American Embassy in Budapest. And uh, we will be uh, part of their conversation about setting up and uh, Working in uh, 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 with a special. Um, apart from this, we are going to have Andrew Maldarez, uh, who is uh, one of the leading researchers into mentoring, talking about judge mentoring. We will have a week where people will get a chance to discuss uh, their uh, uh, their their they are getting on. So there is a lot happening. We are very excited. Uh, I'm sure that we, I haven't been speaking for nine minutes and 42 <laughs> seconds, so uh, I suppose I slowly oh. run. Uh, sorry, that's a, I forgot to set the time, so it's you okay. got so, so probably you're another ready? minute. It's, it, it's five yeah. minutes per, per session yeah. plus one minute in between, so one more minute. Uh, okay. 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 I did want to jump in. She can say hello also. 
uh, in that final minute. I would have loved her to do that, but she sort of didn't want to. But maybe, maybe the, to popular pressure, she might just come and say hello. That's Amazing. Will you do that for us? Um, yeah, hello everybody. I'm really excited to be mentoring the men the uh, to be um on the mentoring course. Um and Oh, looks like we lost both of them. Well, we'll uh thank them for appearing and sorry to cut that short, but since you're gone and time is almost up, we'll we'll move on. Uh, to Daniela and Olga from uh, Civic Engagement Project. Uh, I see both of you in the chat room. Please go ahead and press the talk button and join us. Hello, Olga. Hello. We hear you. And hopefully uh, um, Daniela can join us Daniela also. Please tell us also. about. Yeah. Oh, great. Please tell us about your session. So briefly, I could say, first of all, I'd like to uh, greet everybody and to say thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be involved in such a wonderful project or community. Uh, so our, basically, uh, the, uh, our session is called Online Tools for EFO ESL Civic Engagement Project. And just in few words, because I will give the floor to Daniela, who is the main major moderator. So we'll We'll try to engage people who are participants in uh, developing many interesting civic uh, uh, engagement projects, uh, of course, through the active usage of online tools. Basically, the experience we've got while mentoring uh, different uh, uh, grants and projects in Moldova under the guidance of American councils. Um, Daniela, are you here? Can you hear me? I don't see her in the chat yet. Danielle, if you can, go ahead and press the talk button and join Olga. In the meantime, I guess you still have the floor, Olga. Okay. So this is a professional development opportunity for all instructors, ESL, English as a foreign language, or as a second language, who wish to incorporate civics content into their classrooms. So kind of uh, unusual uh, perspective to uh, get away from the or escape from the traditional way of teaching into something uh, involving voluntary work and community service, and of course, uh, in, uh, integrating online tools into our courses. So there will be five weeks of active involvement, of course, with their kind of uh, meeting people and so on and so forth. But basically, uh, the majority will have a uh, kind of consortia of uh, specialists from uh, uh, from uh, uh, I could say different. Uh, organizations who are uh, NGOs from our countries, and not only from the countries or the partners where we have. And this is the major, the experience from American Councils, Moldova. The second is a FLEX program, which is under the American Councils and Access Micro Scholarship Program. Besides, this is the English Teacher Resource Center, a great resource and a great center for the teachers as well. And uh, basically, we really hope that at the end, everybody will get involved and will get, to, to, uh, get the chance to uh, have a wonderful experience. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to connect. Hello, everyone. Welcome. All right. Hello, Daniel. Uh, can you hear me? Because I'm not using a microphone. Let me know if yes, the sound we, is okay. The sound is great. Um, just to add some technical details. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are, uh, have registered around 47 participants in our Google Plus community. We have a survey and over 23 people have completed the survey. Well, this, this is supposed to be uh, done in the first week, so a lot of our participants are eager to start working. Um, a lot of them have already uh, exchanged messages on the Google Plus platform, so we are in full swing. A lot of them are anxious to start, and they uh, started working on the tasks um, assigned for week one, and some of them even browse through weeks two and three. Um, just to add some interesting information to what Volga has just uh, told you about civic engagement, 
in Moldova and in this part of Europe, uh, civic um, participation of students has become uh, more and more important year by year. It's not enough just to teach language, just to teach uh, linguistic skills, uh, listening, speaking, and reading and grammar. It's very important for students to get out of the classroom, uh, to get involved in their communities, to be updated to the issues, the problems of their communities, and uh, bring those issues for discussion in the classroom. So our session aims to prepare students to engage their um, uh, communities in the classroom, become active citizens, become responsible citizens. Uh, and we will be working with some of our programs that we um, are uh, administering in Moldova exchange programs. We collaborate with a lot of countries through the iEARN network and lately we've joined the eTwinning network which is the largest educational network in uh, Europe. Olga and I have moderated several trainings for the uh, European teachers who want to combine teaching English and content-based instruction, civic engagement, and, and many other interesting things that are related to language and community. Uh, we are going, we have um, a team of professionals. We have the English Teaching Resource uh, Center directors. We have Olga, who is uh, the Access Micro Scholarship uh, Program Coordinator. Um, we have other teachers who have um, tremendous experience in the domain of civic engagement and a youth community development project, the way we um, call them in Moldova. And um, I hope, I see that I'm running out of time, I hope that we will get even more participants by the end of the week. Uh, we wish you everyone a successful session. EVO has been um, an important experience for all of us and I hope that more people get the chance to join. So uh, good luck everyone and let's hope that uh, next week we'll, we'll continue registering participants. All right, thank you very much, Daniela and Olga. Uh, and you know, we're only seven minutes behind schedule, which is a lot better than I expected. Uh, next up are Anne and Brenda from Vocabulary Matters. I see Anne in the chat room. I'm not sure I see Brenda, but Anne, if you can please go ahead and click the talk button and tell us about your session. Hi, this is Anne. I don't have my video connected. I had to change computers. I was having other technical difficulties this morning. That's all right, Glad you could join us. <laughs> Glad I could be here too. Uh, I believe Brenda is in. I'm not sure she'll be joining in here. Right now, what Vocabulary Matters has is basically we're just off to a great start. We've uh, I've got a fantastic team. When we started, it was Brenda and myself. Jenny Thornell joined us. And she's been extremely great um, assistant on it. And then we have four other kind of other moderators that are just going to help us manage the the workload. We have currently have 125 people registered to our in our sessions, and so that um, Brenda is DG Beasley, Hello. by the way. Brenda, you in? You can click talk. So what we've got going is one of our things is collaboration. Because Vocabulary Matters is coming in with the websites, we're bringing in online tools. Um, we're, we're going to start the fir first week, we're just you know getting acquainted. Second week, we're giving a little bit of research behind it. Why is vocabulary important? Because the number of repetitions a person has <laughs> is the um, is that you know the number of times that you need a word and engage in the word, you remember it more. Brenda, you there? I I saw her, but I she seemed to have left us. Are you are you there, Brenda? It's me, G. Beasley. Hello. Uh, Eunice, uh, we see you in the, the chat. If you could step out for now and perhaps join us later. So if you could press the talk button to unmute yourself and uh, uh, BG Binkley has okay. joined us. Hello, Brenda. Go ahead, Brenda. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? 
Okay, yes. um, I just saw a flash of myself. Hello, everyone. Um, Ann and I have went to the um, TESOL conference in 2013, and uh, it was really interesting. We hung out together at the EVO conference, and um, since then we've talked about this, and uh, wonderful words, vocabulary matters is basically a guide. It's, it's a, a map for you to um, explore new territory in, in the uh, wonderful world of um, ESL, uh, wonderful world of the internet. You've got graphics, you've got um, interactive worksheets, you've got all sorts of ideas and games and things that you can do that make it really interesting, but one of the big problems is finding stuff or getting back to stuff, and uh, there's too much uh, information, and what we will try to do is to point you in the direction, then let you explore, then have the participants report back, and that way we will save time, save energy, and get a map out uh, the what we want to do with each other uh, or what we want to do and give each other clues on how to proceed with the rest of with your internet searches because it's out there most of it's free um, and we want to collaborate we want to give you structure we want to um, encourage and motivate people to um, share their ideas and and share their information and how what works what doesn't work and discuss it online that do you have any questions oh lots but only 20 seconds to address them so okay. we'll probably leave it for there <laughs> but uh, thank you okay. both very much for joining us thank you I, I'll look forward to tuning into that wiki and, and finding resources there. Uh, and it's just a reminder to, to you and to all the moderators who join us, when you're done, you might want to remember to press talk again and video so that you're off the air. Otherwise, we get to hear what's going on in your house as you uh, go about your Sunday. Uh, next up, we have Allison from Peace Building for Language Learners. And I see Allison in the chat room. If you can please join us, we'd love to hear about your session. Hello, Allison. Hi. Welcome. Great. Um, so I'm going to be quick because I have to take my daughter to her swimming lesson. So uh, I'm happy to be here. This is my second time working with Valerie Jacart, who is in the Middle East, and she's a part of the mentoring EBO as well. Uh, in 2009, we had a, um, a session on conflict resolution for English language learners around a curriculum that I developed. And this time around, it's a new curriculum put out by the United States Institute of Peace, where I, I work. And we focus on international conflict management. And this toolkit is a, it's a peace building toolkit for educators. And the session's content based, we're looking at content based instruction around the issues of um, conflict resolution and peace building. And it's really intended for. Um, people who see themselves as peace builders, educators who see themselves as peace builders, see a need for peace building in their community, in their schools, in their education environment, and also see the potential for their students to be peace builders. And um, I should also mention that Julia Schlam Salman, she's our, our uh, also in the Middle East, she's our third moderator. Um, I'll mention quickly what we're going to do in each week of the session. We're going to follow the, the content of the toolkits through interactive exercises. We have a wiki um, where we're housing the content and uh, the discussions will take place in uh, our Google community. The first week we're going to be talking about the teaching and learning principles that support education for peace building and the value of uh, multiple perspectives uh, in conflict settings and understanding multiple perspectives, looking at the distinction between dialogue and debate and the role for dialogue in peace building and the place of dialogue and how do you uh, 
teach students to dialogue instead of debate around difficult issues. And we'll begin that conversation about what conflict means to, um, to individuals. In the second week, we're looking, gonna, going to look at uh, definitions of peace and skills of conflict analysis and conflict styles. How do we approach conflict ourselves? Uh, and in week three, we're going to be focusing on active listening, verbal and nonverbal communication skills, since that's such an important part of managing conflict and engaging in peace building. Uh, in week four, we're going to be focusing on negotiation and mediation and uh, exploring role play uh, uh, as a tool for building skills. And in week five, we'll talk about what it means to be a peace builder and engage in some social action. We're going to have two speakers. Uh, throughout the session. One is Tarek Maserani, who is a peace builder and works quite a bit in the Middle East. He works for an organization or with an organization called Seeds of Peace and has done a lot of work with Israeli and Palestinian youth. Uh, and also uh, one of the writers of the toolkits, Christina Verdan, is going to talk about how she's brought social action into her school and community. Uh, and one of the things that struck me uh, in listening to the the session or the description of the session on civic engagement is the really strong connection between these two sessions. And so I can see how people would benefit from participating in actually both. Uh, the, the tools that we're providing in this session can certainly be used to support the civic engagement, EVO, and vice versa. And I'm going to stop there. If there are any questions that you have, happy to answer them. Done. That occurred to me that the, the synergy between your session and the civic engagement session seemed to, to go well together. Um, it also occurs to me that the, the web heads are sort of a, a community of peace building. So I think this session is, is right at home in web head land. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. I hope your daughter has a good time at swimming. And I love the wiki. It's open. It's already Great resources. I'm going to look forward to Thanks. checking that out. We have about 70 members so far. I think I checked this morning. We're at 70, and we're, we're looking forward to in, um, inviting more and welcoming more into the session as we progress. Thanks. Thank you, Allison. It's a great all right, topic. Up, yeah, thank you. This is all. There's so many. I, I, I emphasize with uh, Nellie. I want to take all these sessions. Uh, next up is Clil with uh, Letizia and Daniela. Daniela was here, and it looks like she got booted out or something. Uh, Leticia, I believe you're still here, so please join us. Boy, this pace is something else. No, not a lot of time for chit-chat. Hello, Leticia. Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, um, hello everybody. I want to um, thank um, Vance and uh, um, I want to thank, of course, our mentor uh, Nina and, uh, uh, and Nelly, who is our angel in our session. So, we, um, Daniela and I are going to moderate uh, this session about CLIL, <coughs> CLIL using technology for content language integrated learning, um, as we've been um, um, discussing um, a lot in Italy uh, recently about um, uh, CLIL, so the uh, teaching and learning of um, a subject, a curricular subject, um, a scientific or a humanistic subject in a um, uh, foreign language. Uh, in our case, of course, uh, English, but it could be any other um, second language, any other foreign language. Uh, and um, the, um, so the, the focus of our um, uh, session is to um, uh, deal with the um, uh, potential of this uh, new methodology, uh, which is going across all the uh, school um, levels. And uh, especially in Italy, uh, we, um, we have introduced it through a reform, a reform law in upper secondary schools. But uh, we, want to, um, uh, we want to foster the reflection and the sharing of ideas and practices um, among all participants from all over the world. So uh, we, we know that um, excellent uh, experience in, um, in the U.S., for example, on uh, content-based instruction. And so we want to um, uh, foster um, debate and so a sharing of ideas and practice, um, uh, not only in Italy, of course, not only in Europe, but uh, all over the world. 
And um, um, this is um, uh, the, the, the focus of the session is, of course, to um, uh, integrate the um, uh, content and so the language, um, which is which are the two um, uh, spheres, the two uh, issues of clear, um, together with technologies, with web tools, and so web 2.0, and uh, uh, all the, the potential new technologies applied to the uh, teaching in the practices. And that, therefore, we're going to use. Um, um, different tools and different. Uh, so uh, each each week we're going to focus on um, uh, specific tools and specific um, uh, technology which could, could be used and applied in in to teaching practice, especially uh, in clear in a clear lesson. Um, I think Daniela is is now uh, online. So if we we have some more time, I, I can leave the floor to her. If you are out there, Daniela, please do join in. And uh, your your session's living mostly in the Moodle, yes? Yes, our session is in uh, in the Moodle. Yeah, we have uh, everything is gonna um, take place in Moodle. So we got a forum, um, and um, uh, but of course um, inside Moodle we're going to use um, and uh, uh, sharing the reflection on different tools. Um, so together, uh, Moodle yeah, is our main space, uh, and um, uh, we were gonna have um, a lot of webinars with uh, um, uh, national and international um, experts. On, on CLIL, um, and uh, um, so, for example, just um, the first week um, uh, we are going to have two uh, webinars. The first one is, uh, um, uh, is going to take place on the um, 14th, um, uh, and is um, by the Gisela uh, Langer, who is uh, um, uh, an international expert on CLIL and an inspector at the Italian Ministry of Education, and. Um, uh, on the 17th, um, uh, we're going to have um, a great honor because uh, uh, David Marsh, who is the inventor of the CLIL acronym, uh, is going to be um, uh, our um, uh, guest and is going to, uh, to have a webinar um, uh, for us. And then uh, each week um, uh, we'll have different uh, webinars uh, according to the topic of the, uh, of the week itself and always uh, integrated CLIL with um, uh, technology. And and I see that it's an open Moodle, so if people, like I was able to just log in as a guest and check out a lot of the resources, so if, if people want to check it out, they can do so pretty easily. Yeah, that's what I wanted, we wanted to do because um, uh, we want to share uh, and um, we, we decided to, I mean, to uh, uh, leave materials free uh, for everyone who wants to um, um, take inspiration, take uh, ideas, and uh, uh, was our philosophy. Speaking of including everyone, who's that trying to get into your shop there? Looks like there was another face about to say hello to us. Or am I seeing things? It looks like someone is next to you. Or not. Maybe I'm seeing things. I thought I saw someone poke their head in. So sorry, Vance. Maybe Daniela has got some problems because um, um, she wanted to to say hello to you and uh, to our to all our colleagues here and um, all people participants who are going to take to um, register our Moodle. But um, maybe uh, she she uh, was having problems in connecting. So uh, sorry, sorry for her. Well, I'm glad you were able to join us and tell us about the session. And uh, we are, you know, we're, we're moving through all this stuff so quickly that there's not a lot of time for interaction. But we are going to stay on after we've completed all the sessions and kind of open the floor up for people to say hello or chat a bit more. Uh, so thank you very much, Leticia. Have a great session. And, thank you. Uh, thank you, Van. And we hope to have you as well in our session, of course. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Uh, I will certainly be checking that out. Next up, Marina from Designing and Managing Projects in the ESL uh, ESOL organization. Uh, so, Marina, if you are there, please do join us. All right. Hello. Can you Hello. hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. All right. Uh, well, um, basically, um, uh, I'll, I'll be just briefly introducing. Can you? Wait, um, I'm sorry. Sure. No. Well, I might be telling the the thing about you seeing me. But um, the the thing is this: this is uh, the first time we are offering something from management. 
uh, and uh, all right, I can't I can't connect my camera, but I will. It's, it's, you're not missing much. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, I'm pleased to to be working for the fifth year. I think I can't remember how many how long I've been with the with the EBOs. Uh, mostly in the mentoring one, and this year I was planning to to stop and this chance of working with great and important people like Andy Hockley and Andy Curtis uh, cropped up, so we decided to to I mean I decided to take a little bit more of my time and uh, and try to support their their interest in sharing with the professionals from all over the world. Right? I'm sorry to interrupt, okay. Marina. Your audio is coming in and out a little bit. If I can encourage you to stay close to the microphone. Okay. Can you? Oh, it, thank oh, you. It, it does sound better, right? Okay. Thank you. And so the thing is that And now we almost totally lost you. Oh, really? Um, Uh, but whatever you did that first time, I first wherever, wherever you were speaking helped a lot. Helped a lot. Uh, here. Can you hear yes. Me? Yes. Okay. There's also quite an echo. But I think oh, that's a matter of non headset, so I'm just going to go ahead and mute myself and, and let Marina talk. Okay. Well, wow, sorry. All right. So, what we're doing or appearing in the in the videos. And it's a joint uh it's a session support um sponsored by the Aya Tackle um session research group. So it's a very interesting thing for me because it's the two big organizations working together and I absolutely adore this. And, and we already have eight members uh, in the group and fifty five already uh, found their way into the into the wiki and have registered. So I think that we're looking forward to a very uh, active uh, session. Um, the the topic is basically designing and managing projects. And even though we are managers, I mean the ones who are uh, leading the thing, it's open to all teachers because we're constantly working with projects inside and outside the uh, the classroom. But what is interesting is that you have the possibility of Giving feedback on the project from people who have a lot of experience on that, and, and this can—I think that it's a wonderful uh, opportunity. I mean, it's not very often that you get to have uh, people with lots of, lots of experience to tell you or to suggest other possibilities or, or ways and, and ideas or uh, that you have to put the practice. Uh, so basically, I think that this is the most important thing. Um, we have a week per uh, week um, activities. Of course, the first one is introducing um, each other, and we do have a survey uh, that at least is, is, uh, has provided us with very interesting information. I, I mean, we have people from the from all different continents. I'm really happy about having people from Africa. Uh, and I, I am um, thrilled uh, about the fact that uh, each time uh, South America is participating more and more. Um, and, and then we will start designing, uh, I mean, projects, and we will be accompanying uh, each of the, of the people with every, uh, with their doubts and uh, Thinking of possible ways of implementing it, our main um, hope in the long term is to start establishing a, a wider um, a community of ELT managers right, who are a product of the ELT field itself because it has certain characteristics. Okay. Um, uh, uh, all right. We we weren't able to catch everything. Uh, but we do oh, have to uh, 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 check the stage for more. Uh, thank you very much for joining, for joining us. Great session. Great session. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now you're perfectly clear. <laughs> anyway. Um, so next up, we've got Machine EBO. 
with uh, Marissa and Yin. Uh, so please join us in real form or avatar form or however you would like. Hello, hello. Can you hello, see Yen. me? Hello? We hear you. We don't see you yet. Uh, okay. Yes. Hmm, the camera, well, there seems to be problem with my camera. Okay. I didn't get time to change that. Well, nice to meet you all. Um, I will start with the wall of our session here. And um, I think you could see also uh, our syllabus here, Machine Evil. Uh, it's not active at the moment. But, um, well, this is our third year we are doing uh, Machine Evil. And uh, at the moment, we have about 160 which have uh, registered to our um, um, Google community uh, this morning here, 160. And uh, at the same time, we have uh, about 50 who are, who are going into details in a spreadsheet with uh, names and experience. Um, so it's, it's growing. It's like a MOOC, actually, more or less. And of course, there will be, uh, uh, when we start up here, there will be a, a dropout, of course. Uh, but we are trying very much to, to avoid that. At the moment, uh, this uh, today here, later, here, a couple of hours later, we are going to have our first kickoff. Uh, and we are using Second Life in our work because we are doing machinima in a virtual world. And uh, that's Second Life. Um, we are quite a lot of people or moderators. We are trial moderators and actually three or four assistant moderators um, because, um, well, with the number of people here, we guess, I personally guess it would be around 50 or 60 people taking part in it. Um, and because of uh, our experience from, from the previous years, we have made a fast track because uh, uh, of people who are not experienced with Second Life. So actually, um, uh, this data today here, when we meet in Second Life to our kickoff, we will um, uh, separate uh, those in two groups, the experience and the newcomers to Second Life. And um, then we will start up <coughs> uh, with the basic thing for the newcomers and the more experienced are going to create some groups out for um, some topics um, as they could be um, like uh, fables, it could be fairy tales, it could be uh, some grammar films, and joke telling, idioms, and so on. That could be some of the topics. So the more experienced are going to, to create the groups and, uh, and, uh, and do the preparation. And then that will be, uh, that will happen in, in this coming week here. Um, we are divided into groups, like you can see here. And, um, and then we too, the newcomers uh, could go into to the groups uh, which have been created by the more experienced uh, and see uh, what they would like to take part in. And of course, it, this is a very global thing. We come across from, from all over the show. <laughs> uh, I myself, when I uh, did this for about three years ago here, we were some, there were some from California, I come myself from Denmark, and some from Finland and Germany and Belgium mm -hmm. and UK. So it's going to be quite a global thing, and that's also necessary because we are dealing with different time zones to, to be able to, to collaborate, making storyboard, of course, using an open Google document to, to write in and communicate. And we are actually very pleased. I mean, we, this first time we're using a Google community. We created one for the moderators where we can communicate and share, uh, and of course in the Google document and spreadsheets and so on. At the same time, we have this uh, open for, for the participants, the community there, and uh, it seemed uh, very nice uh, that uh, the way it works, it's new for us. And, um, but if you're going to the week plan, we have week two, where well, I said, then it start up the basic film and editing start up there, and of course, it carry on in week three, and in week four we have some more advanced things like um, green sheet and uh, how to make credits, and of course there will be um, 
the dealing with which kind of software we should use. I myself and a lot of people people are using Camtasia, but you can also use some other uh, free stops like Fraps and so on. But we'll take that uh, step by step. We're quite an experienced group, so um, so we we are able to deal with more or less everything. Um, then of course uh, we have this week five where we have final editing, and then we we end up with a big party, a film festival. Uh, why we are going to, to show the films and so on. Uh, yes, I wonder how much time I have left now here. Oh, there's a timer up at the top that's showing a little over time. Okay. This is one of my favorite sessions. Okay, yes, but um, yeah. That was my, my only question is if, if someone joins the session, can Doris teach them the gang sign because it's a very cool sign that she put into the chat room. Sorry, again? Uh, I don't know if you've been looking at the chat room, but uh, Doris uh, put in the uh, Machine EVO 2004 gang sign. It's a very cool, funky uh, chat thing that she did. Um, okay, I can't. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I can't uh, see that, sorry. Well, you, that's all right. We'll check the chat, chat log for that. Um, thank you very much, Ian. Cool okay. session. I will certainly stop by Second Life uh, and uh, check out the festival week five as well. Yes. See you. See. I'm wondering if I can elbow my way in here. My co-moderator is online, and he said he has to leave in about 10 minutes. Do you think we could do multi -mook right now? Why don't we go ahead and do that, and hopefully Dennis will uh, forgive you. Uh, because he will be next. Oh. So, Jim, if you're available, please go ahead and join us. Uh, and why don't you start, uh, Vance? And, uh, yep, timer has started. And I don't have anything queued. Well, let's see, I've got a web tour here. Yeah, this is uh, going to be a little talking about Multimook 2.014. And Multimook is a session that started as a multi literacies course back in 2004, about 10 years ago now, for uh, TESOL principles and practices of online teaching, and eventually, well, it just evolved. Um, it's gotten into, it, it still talks a little bit about multiliteracies, but I think one of the uh, big issues in multiliteracies, and it's kind of gone way beyond that, but it's, it looks, obviously, the more I do this, the more I uh, find that we're, um, that that's how we learn. I'm just very impressed with the connectivism that we're, uh, you know, illustrating here and in, in how we're connecting and how we're uh, EVO itself, for example, is uh, we, we've raised the question, are EVO sessions MOOCs? The, the only thing that they may have missed was being massive. But we've definitely got EVO sessions now, uh, crafting the ePerfect ebook, Nellie's session, for example, have hundreds of participants. They're, they're massive sessions by any definition, and they're open. And well, their sessions is the only thing. I guess we have to call it a moose, really, if we want to uh, avoid the word course. But still, um, what we're doing with Multimook, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk for a minute. If Jim is there, Jim can come on in a, in a minute or so and tell us about badges. And there's a timer up at the top, so we'll keep an eye on that. But I would just like to tell you a little bit about how we're going to organize the course. It's a course where uh, everybody in the course sets their own goals and then tries to fulfill them and then report to us about how they are doing that. Some people aren't really comfortable with that. They'd rather be trained, and that's fine. There are plenty of uh, options for uh, people who really want to get something. That, that's their, that's their, their goal and their, uh, what they want to accomplish. But in our course, we're, we're sort of talking about that. And because it's about MOOCs, we can actually – well, one thing I'm kind of impressed with is the crafting uh, – the ePerfect textbook uh, session, and so I'm kind of looking at that as a, an illustration of a MOOC as part of MultiMOOC, and also uh, Dave Cormier, who uh, has done, he coined the word MOOC, is, is doing a, a MOOC himself that starts in uh, on the 14th of January, so we're going to join that, or at least I am, and there are other MOOCs, we have lots of other MOOCs that people can join. So, well, basically what we're, we are going to be a, a group that's going to sort of connect with other groups in a, in a very connectivist fashion. And one thing we're introducing this year is badges. And if Jim is there, 
And then Jim, if you're there, hit the talk button and say you're there. Let's see if this works. You hear me there, folks? There you are. Okay, so okay, you have great. A, a minute and a half to tell us a little bit about what you plan to do in the multi-book session. Well, a little bit of background here. I'm, I'll be introducing the, the concept of badges. It's likely already known to most people. But, uh, this is Jim the Buckingham, concept, by the way. Sorry, and the concept of digital badges is what I'm looking to explore and then eventually go into open badges. So it means introducing people to what is essentially uh, micro-credentialing. It's, it's an effort to give recognition to people who may master a given skill and, and that would otherwise not get recognized, giving them some sort of credit of, of that that they can visually present um, anywhere and everywhere on the web of their choosing. And it really, really lends itself well to two MOOCs. Um, I think the, the, the notion of MOOCs, badges, and learning analytics are three major game changers that are taking place in education. And uh, I think we've got a grand opportunity to like, at least explore two of those three within the multimedia, the, the multiliteracies MOOC uh, that uh, Vance myself and I believe that Dali will be be hosting. I think I'm likely to leave it at that, Vance. I'm, I'll be presenting what I mean by digital badges, what we mean by digital badges, and then hopefully go to the group with uh, them soliciting or me soliciting the group for ideas and just how they want, want to explore the concept of, of badges, uh, perhaps learning how to realize those badges, uh, learning some of the the background questions that they should be asking before implementing a badges ecosystem. Uh, okay. On and on from there. How's that? Okay, that's fine. We want to model good timekeeping skills. Uh, I put the link uh, goodbyegutenberg.pbworks.com, what I've got up on the screen now. If you want to know more about the course, just go there. And it's open. Everything is open and online. Uh, and thank you very much. Yeah, I was going to say, I assume all your material is, is online and open, so that makes sense. All right, next up, Dennis, thank you for uh, uh, giving up your spot in line, but we'd love to hear from you and hear about <coughs> English to Young Learners. Hello, Dennis. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, now I can see myself, you can see me too. Um, first of all, thanks uh, for this session, It's uh, for organizing it. It's exciting and motivating in itself. And I think I began all this um, as, a, as, a, as a newbie, you know, learning how to be a webhead. Um, I, you, you've mentioned young learners. It's not surprising if we are now. I don't know who we is. Everybody involved. We're we're part of IATF, or you know, the equivalent but smaller of TESOL, and we divide it into gr interest groups. And one of them is called Young Learners and Teenagers. And um, this, we're stuck with these young learners. It, it was meant years ago, over 10 years ago, what people meant by young learners was not adults. But we now think of ourselves, we've reorganized into very young learners, young learners, and teenagers. Um, that, I hope, you know, explains some of the acronyms. What, um, so we're, the, the course is actually, oh, I know I shouldn't use that word, but it slipped out. Um, our session is actually teaching English to, to young learners and, and adults, and there's a v uh, rubbish, uh, to uh, teenagers, and um, it's a very simple format, seven minutes, uh, um, seconds I hope, um, it's a very simple format, I've gathered together marvelous people who've said that they will, they will do um, a talk, a presentation. Let me whip through the names. Stephen Krashen, Alexander Sokol, Nick Peachy, Shelley Terrell, that Stevens, Charles Goodger, Luke Bodromo, Graham Stanley, Susan Hilliard, Barbara Sokomoto, Marie Delaney, and Russell Standard. Two or three are actually um, uh, listening to this and, and in this, uh, this room. And they are uh, dealing with um, talking about some of the titles, A Path to Family Learning that can also be walked by some teachers, Trends in Educational Technology, Survival Tips for Teaching Young Learners English. I love this one. 
chaos in learning and how to engage learners in resolving that chaos through networking with one another by somebody called Stevens V and so on and so forth. Kids, video games, images and ELT and SEN, special educational needs um, and a lovely one, uh, managing teacher stress to be a better teacher. After our presenters have presented, uh, of course, uh, we're using Adobe uh, Connect, to be for ITEFL, they will be paying the bill. Um, everything will be recorded and um, the session should start uh, a conversation, discussion, um, and those will also be recorded. Um, and what I'm hoping is that by bringing together a, a few people, just before I came online, 161 have signed up. We know that they won't all be with us until the end, but it's a good start. And, and I hope the, the long-term aim is that people from amongst the 161, uh, motivated by um, the people who have spoken to them, will start exchanging experience uh, and putting on ideas. And I'm looking forward to it immensely. Okay, I think that's it. Nicely done. Thanks, thanks very much. Uh, and the chaos that was is exactly what Multimook is about, by the way. And uh, I see that the Yahoo groups where a lot of the action is going to be, but there's also a uh, WordPress blog where materials will be published. Yeah, I'll come time. back to say yes. <laughs> come back just to say yes, that's right. Our platform, I should have mentioned that, which was uh, actually designed for us by Finlo. He's, he's updated a bit. It's a kind of, everything is on one page. Um, uh, and that's really great. You can see what's going on, where it's been recorded, everything on this, this WordPress thing that we're looking at at the moment, teaching English to young learners and teenagers. It, it, that helps enormously. It structures everything that happens thereafter. Uh, Over and out again. All right. Thank you very much, Dennis. Uh, all right. Moving along. Next up is mobile applications. Uh, and I believe I saw Sadat in the chat room. I'm not sure about anyone else. But if you're there, Sadat, please do uh, click the talk button and tell us about your session. Oh, I don't see him anymore. All right, if anyone from mobile apps is here, please let us know in the chat room or just go ahead and, and click talk and say hello. Uh, while we're waiting for that, why don't we queue up the perfect textbook? Uh, is Shelly here? I don't see Shelly either. All right, well. Again, if someone's here from ePerfect Textbook, let us know and join us. In the meantime, Nelly and Ludmila, you're on Moodle for Teachers M4T. Please join us. All right. Uh, this is Nelly. Hello. And Hello, I'm really Nelly. excited. Um, you're coming in a little bit low. Oh, if you can I? stay close to the mic, please. Oh. Okay. I'll speak like, uh, who was it? Uh, Leticia. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay, you. great. Anyways, um, I've been, hi Ludmilla, I've been giving a lot of free uh, oh. sessions and courses and so on, but Evo is just amazing. I, I, I can't get over the fact that, that, you know, we're doing this and we're so excited. Um, so far, uh, let me just give you uh, what we have for the Moodle for Teachers. We've got, this is the third year. There are five moderators, and the number of the participants keeps going up. So right now, it's at 823. Can you believe that? We'll see what happens at the end. I'll fill you in <laughs> on uh, what they're doing. We started yesterday with a live session because we wanted to get people ready for tomorrow. But apparently, they're so active that they're keeping us up 24-7. Uh, the Moderators are from Poland, Venezuela, and the UK, United States, and Canada. So we've pretty much covered, I think, well, except for Australia. We've got someone else who's interested in helping out. 
if you know of volunteers who would like to uh, be sub moderators or just helpers, that would be great. Um, there are two main areas. There is the WizIQ Live classes with the content that will stay there forever, even after the course ends, after the Moodle course ends. We also have the Moodle for Teachers uh, course area. You can go in um, as a guest. You can't add any content or do very much, but you can uh, roam and just check things out on the Moodle. And we have a uh, Moodle practice area for teachers where they can practice all the uh, Moodle features. What's exciting is that there are lots of new plugins for the Moodle 2.5. And one of the uh, big attractions uh, was developed by Justin Hunt from, uh, I think he's in Korea or somewhere in that area, Japan maybe. He developed something called Moodle, a Poodle, sorry. So there's Poodle on Moodle. And Ludmilla is going to talk a little bit about her Poodle maybe. But what's great about the Poodle is that it's a recorder. Uh, by the way, Justin Hunt is an English teacher as well as a software developer. So the, uh, the Moodle is a recorder. It's an audio and video recorder. So language learners can finally express themselves through a recorder on the Moodle. So uh, we're really excited about that and some other features that have come into uh, Moodle. Ludmilla? I'll let you um, go on for the rest of the time. Thank you, everyone. Well, I think uh, I think Nelly um, addressed and discussed almost everything, but it was uh, amazing to see how uh, how big interest is to the workshop model for teachers. And yesterday we had uh, a session and. People, we had some technical difficulties, but the, the uh, participants didn't leave, um, and they were interested. And besides Moodle, we also use, uh, we involve, engage our participants in um, different activities and using uh, Web 2.0 tools. And uh, in our first session, we invited uh, our participants to introduce themselves using also evil uh, tradition 3.2.1 introductions and we use Flipgrid, a very interesting tool, uh, MoveNote, and um, our participants are really engaged and they, uh, besides the tools that are available on Moodle, um, as Nelly said, Poodle, <laughs> But um, in their uh, real life, some, uh, some Moodle um, uh, in different uh, schools or in the institutions, they might not have that uh, plugin, so they can use uh, other tools to introduce themselves. And uh, so we really were excited about that. So during the first week, we always spend time on engaging people and creating this community of and born people so it was really great and it's a great tradition it's a wonderful opportunity it's five minutes so i think uh we are all excited and uh good luck to evil uh this 2014. yay well thank you very much and uh congratulations on on getting such active participation. Uh, that should be a, an interesting one to tune into. Um, all right. I still don't see Shelly or Sadat. If anyone is from mobile apps or creating the ePerfect book, please let us know. In the meantime, Ali, if you are available. I think uh, this is Elizabeth saying, I think Shelly should get here soon. She's in the live stream, on the live stream page. So I think she ah. should be coming. Okay, Shelly, we are standing by for you. But maybe after Ali. Yes, if Ali is around, please uh, um, join us. I see Shelly was saying no one invited her. You don't need an invitation to WebHead. You just barge in. So, Ali, if you are able, please do press the talk button. Yes, we can. Thank you. 
sounds wonderful. Thank you very much. So to begin with, I'd like to thank the EVO team for organizing this event and I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2014 and this Electronic Village online session. So my name is Eddie Watt Sagdi and I'm an assistant professor of peaceful and applied linguistics at Middle East Technical University. I'm currently based in the Northern Cyprus campus, so we'll move, moving on to the, the main campus in Ankara starting the spring semester. So I'm also the current chair of the NS interest section. And our EVO session is supported primarily by the NS interest section in TESOL International Association. For those who may not necessarily be familiar with the acronym, so we're one of those EVOs uh, with the acronyms actually. And this stands for non-native English speakers in TESOL. And our interest section is actually one of the 21 interest sections in TESOL International Association. Uh, just to briefly summarize our overarching goals as an interest section is to promote the awareness and advocacy among the LT professionals who would like to redefine benchmarks of our profession by prioritizing such values as collaboration, participation, equity, justice, and professionalism. A lot of the uh, qualities and assets of our profession that some of our earlier moderators just uh, just mentioned. So to support this to support this goal this year we're collaborating with Call Interest section and designing our uh, Evo session. Uh, that's actually our second Evo session. Uh, the previous one was in 2009 so we're quite happy to be back with the EVO team uh, in 2014. So for the next five weeks, our participants will uh, join our, they're going to be a part of our virtual discussion platform, which is primarily designed to identify and address multilingual, multicultural, and multinational perspectives to re-examine some of the fundamental assumptions, practices, and theories in the field of TESOL. So if you like, I'll, let me briefly tell you about our game plan for the next five weeks. So we're starting uh, our week one with the introductions and me serving as the guest speaker for this, uh, for this week. And my intention as the, uh, as the guest speaker is to present an overview of the Ines Moulin, the nuts and bolts, and discuss some of the myths and misconceptions embedded in the TESOL profession. The second week, Week two uh, of our EVO session focuses on the leadership roles in regional and international uh, organization associations. And we have invited Dr. Yilin Sun, who is the TESOL's incoming president, to share her insights about getting involved in leadership roles in regional interactive uh, international professional organizations from a non-native English speaker's perspective. So week three, uh, we're moving on to mentoring practices with uh, with Dr. Valeria Jakar from Israel, one of our longtime supporters, and who will share her perspectives on mentoring and being mentored as the teachers of English. So, uh, and she's going to be focusing on effective roles and practices, some best practices uh, when it comes to mentoring and being mentored. Week four is about doing research on the NS issues and, uh, you know, primarily focus on practical suggestions primarily for graduate students with doc, Dr. Kim Kibai from Rice University, who is our uh, interest section's chair-elect for this year. She'll focus on promoting professional growth and uh, what it means and what we need to become successful professional scholars uh, in the field. And the final session uh, will host one of my closest friends and colleagues, Nathaniel Rudolph, from, uh, who's, based, who's currently based in Japan. And he will share his insights into building and implementing sustainable practices against unprofessional discrimin discriminatory treatments, treatments for both native and non-native English-speaking teachers from a localized perspective. As of two GMT today, uh, NS Evo has about 70 participants in our Google Plus community from several different continents. And we're very excited to begin our five-week journey uh, with our participants from different parts of the world. So if you are interested in our session, please, I would like to uh, share uh, our welcome video link in the chat uh, window in a few seconds. So if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them and I'd like to thank you all and have a great Evo session, everyone. Thank you very much, Ali. Um, uh, so thank you so much. And thank you. There's the link to the welcome video in the chat, which will all be published, by the way. If you're missing any or all of this, uh, of course, the Blackboard Collaborate recording will be available, and the video from the simulcast and audio and chat transcripts will all be available 
on webheadsinaction.org. So Shelly was heading in. I don't think I see her in the chat. If you are here, Shelly, please go ahead and press the talk button and say hello. Elizabeth, if you have any updates, let us know. And if anyone from mobile apps is here, please do chime in. Well, I, I can't believe Shelley's not making it. This is Elizabeth again. Uh, but I can tell you just a little bit about this um, e, -t e textbook um, group. Um, there's uh, over 400 people enrolled. Its main base is um, a Yale group, and then it's all over the place because from the wiki, there are endless listly lists which seem to take you all over the place. Um, but uh, the, everyone is being very, very active already. There was the pre-course tasks, and um, then. Uh, no, I'm not the mentor, Nina. Um, I just uh, th th there are a number of participants. Um, there are exactly as we speak 409, and um, and I don't know if you've seen the list of moderators. They're all more um, competent the ones than the other, and. Uh, um, and uh, yes, that was the one thing I wanted to add, was that the thanks to the Yao group, people are already organizing themselves into groups. So there's a young learners group, a pre-adolescence group. A, so there, the young learners are definitely young. Uh, pre-adolescence group, a teens group, and an adults group. And within the adults group, people are getting into different. Um, areas of ESP. It's uh, really quite amazing because we haven't actually started yet. Uh, so uh, I think that's all I can say because I am simply. Shelly is I, here. I, I, yes, yeah, oh, Shelly is here, so please do join us, Shelly. Uh, and while she is. Uh, I've, I've just put up the, uh, doing the Google so. group link. Do you all see the, the Google yes, community Shelley, link? Yes, Shelly, we hear you. We don't see you yet, so please go ahead and if, turn your video on if you I can. No, I want to see me. <laughs> Here? <laughs> it's been really crazy, so hi, everyone. Sorry. I'm very glad you made it. I saw you. You didn't get an invitation, but no one here gets an invitation. Oh, we just I, show up. I, I was confused because the Google. Um, the Google. I, I thought we were on Google, so I kept seeing the Google, and I was like, "How do I get in the Google?" I thought it was in the Google Plus community. So please ignore all my messages that say uh, anything crazy. So Elizabeth did a great job pinch hitting for you and told us a bit about your yes. uh, session. But is there anything you'd like to add about uh, the perfect? Um, yes, uh, we already have 400 members. They're very active. Uh, we have a Twitter chat going on today. Um, Ebook evil. Um, and that's just kind of so people can have that personal um, kind of access questions directly. We did that. Um, well, actually, we have a meeting greet. So we, we have a hangout session, um, and I'll put the link for that. Um, everything is within the wiki, but the only thing you have to join is the Google Plus community. Um, we are in five weeks. We have mission uh, with hundreds of teachers worldwide and 15 mentors uh, from 12 different countries to create the first chapter of your e-textbook. Um, and we've, our mentor is Rubina St. Louis. And Rubina has been really great with um, helping us. Um, at, at the beginning, um, we were going to try and create an entire e-book. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's not very practical. So um, you can download the syllabus. Uh, we have three sponsors, so, so we're very um, happy about that. The teacher development SIG. Um, materials and writing SIG, and I think we have another call SIG, uh, and I think that's PCL based. Uh, but basically, the five weeks cover week one. Uh, we have an introduction. Um, uh, people are already doing some of the first half, uh, which is cr um, creating the Creative li Commons license for your book. Um, right now, we're doing three, two, one introductions and getting to know each other. The community's been very good with that. Um, and a lot of them are new. So um, if you're new to web tools, 
that's okay. I've worked with Elizabeth Sound um, in the past for two EVO sessions that so were very successful. Uh, a lot of it thanks to Elizabeth Ann. And so we're very welcoming for people who are very new to uh, Web 2.0 tools. Um, we're going to be using a lot of Google tools. That's why we are in the Google Plus. I think Google Plus has been really good um, a way to. And then we're going to work on the content, uh, mapping it out, and then finally, um, in the end, and people um, can collaborate. We do break it down. It's a large number, um, but we break it down into peer groups. So already we have um, people who have joined peer groups for young learners, pre-adolescents, teens, and adults. And then from there, they can uh, break into even more. And we'll be using Google Docs to do a lot of the editing and the voice comments and also our regular comments. So five weeks, you get to work with great people like Lindsay Confield, uh, Chuck Sandy, which are well-known, um, award-winning <laughs> um, um, authors. So we're very excited about that. And then we have um, Earth Gay, another award-winning. Um, we have Jen Rashore. Um, and then we have teachers who have worked with their students in creating e-textbooks um, like Andre J. Spang. Um, we have uh, Debbie, Deborah uh, Tibovich, who's also part of the mentor, Tomasis, as well. Um, we have uh, Terry Friedman, Janet B. and Cheney, Dave Guyman, Sylvia Guinan, uh, Guyman, sorry, Sylvia Guinan, um, Kelly Jake Duncan, Jackie Gerstein, um, and then MC Fluency, um, Jason Levine. Um, who are all, and then of course me, who will be there to help guide these participants. So we're very, very excited about it. Sounds awesome. Should be a rocking mm -hmm. session. Uh, you also have something I've been meaning to mention about other sessions. You have a hashtag, uh, and I know you are an active tweeter, uh, and so your hashtag is, what is your hashtag? It's ebook evo, and I'll go ahead and put that in the box, and um, you can go to ebookevo.pbworks.com and you'll be able to find um, all the information. Uh, we are encouraging people not to join the wiki because we won't actually accept anyone on the wiki. Everything is done on the Google Plus community. We want people to go to one place, find everything in one place, so it doesn't take a lot of time. We encourage people to really, we're going to do Howard Rheingold's co-learning communities and really test this out and see how, how pe people can learn together, peer edit together, and just um, the community kind of drive itself. Yeah, very cool. This seems to be the year of the Google Plus community for uh, EVO. And I also wanted to ask anyone from other sessions who might have a hashtag to please go ahead and toss it in the chat. I've posted uh, as, as many as I could on the Web Hip in Action page, but if there are some hashtags for other sessions, please post them there. All right, we've done 17 out of 18 sessions. I think we have not heard anyone from mobile apps. If anyone from mobile apps is available, please let us know. If not, then I think we're done with the session overviews and can open things up. I think this is just a phenomenally moderated event. Uh, yeah, it took exactly two hours. <laughs> Eleven o'clock on the dot. I mean, yeah, um, sixteen hundred. No, yeah, sixteen hundred GMT. It, Amazing it has never been job. The webheads that we run a tight ship, but uh, sometimes the cats just get in line. Yeah, because it's it's a new it's concept good. of planned cat herding. <laughs> Something we thanks to everybody. So well, it, it, maybe we can hear from some of the participants? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, if anyone from Mobile Apps is here, please join us. Otherwise, the floor is open. We've got spaces in our chat. Just press talk and say hello. If you have comments, questions, or just want to say whatever, please just press the talk button. I'd like to comment because I may have to leave suddenly because um, uh, my wife is going to come out and ask me to come to dinner. But um, the recording of this, this is being recorded as we speak, and the recording gets posted uh, at the Illuminate site as soon as everyone 
leave the uh, the chat room. So I, I believe Jeff will manage that. But um, basically, you have to make sure Jeff has to be the last one out the door. And when Jeff says the word, everyone's got to go, or Jeff has to toss them out. So um, anyway, just let you know. But 